need for the jobs, and one of the problems right now is people can't move. So where are the jobs going forward? Because a lot of them have been in the cities. Where are the jobs, for example, in these smaller scale communities, and how does that, what will we be doing in the future cities since we're contracting as an economy? Can I dive in with this? Because the weakness of Jim's argument is the weakness of what happens with a lot of architects and planners who kind of ignore or don't understand economic forces that operate. To me, I look at the Midwest and say, well, it would be lovely to rebuild those. I mean, is that the, what the Midwest needs? There's really, that it's, what is powering that economy? What could power that economy? You know, that has to be identified, actually. Because uh, there's plenty of infrastructure in the Midwest. There's highways galore, there's underused railroads, uh, there's plenty of room on the Mississippi River if you want to shove barges up and down. And that's actually not their problem. It may not be an ideal green infrastructure, but that is actually, they're not their economic problem. And what I see is, yet I think, especially global warming will challenge things like supply chains that we rely on, but that is not necessarily going to be like the deal breaker of the global economy. Instead of, to, you know, the global economy can exist if supply chains for sneakers, you know, shrink from 12,000 miles to 2,000 miles. But in the bigger picture, there are so many moving parts that dictate to us what this global economy is that um, it's not going to go away. In fact, we've had a global economy for many, many hundreds of years. I mean, America almost got broken by the, uh, when, you know, when it was starting out uh, by the global economy because Britain controlled the globalization, the global trade that existed, and America was absolutely, utterly dependent on it. And uh, so, in a, in a sense, the global economy was more powerful then on people's lives than it is now. So it will change its nature, for sure. And I think part of what's very important is to explore where that nature, what that nature is going to be. But I think it's going to still be around. And it's, so I sort of think that the huge cities are not going to go away. They become more another issue that we have to contend with. What about them works, and what about them doesn't work? On the other hand, I think you cannot just take suburbs and shove them off the edge of the table and say, goodbye, you're over, because they're with us. In other words, the infrastructure's there, the buildings are there, the land use has been altered, and to undo all that, and to make uh, some uh, you know, new kind of Eden, is will take so many resources that we can't imagine. So we actually do have to figure out and I know it's a subject of a number of you know, events here, how to retrofit them and what makes them work and what makes them more um, appeal, you know, I mean, efficient ec economically and environmentally. You know, that's where we gotta go. Uh, well, uh, first of all, I don't mean to give the, give the impression that I think that all global trade will vanish, because I don't think it will. It's just not going to be uh, the gigantic dynamic system that we've experienced in the last half century or so. It's gonna, that will be very different. Um, I, I think that, uh, first of all, that what the nature of a job is, is going to change. Uh, a lot of it is not going to be, uh, people are not going to find uh, kind of permanent comfort within uh, necessarily the corporate context or the institutional context. I think. Uh, People are going to uh, find vocational roles and useful things to do to the, that people will uh, uh, be willing to pay them to do, but it, it won't necessarily be a job. Um, people who were working on farms uh, 90 years ago didn't necessarily think that they had a job. They had a way of life, but it wasn't it wasn't you know working in a cubicle writing uh, advertising for the, for the Gap, that, that's different. Um, I do believe that uh, agriculture is going to come closer to the center of economic life than it has for many generations. It's not going to, you know, it, I, we're not, we may not go back to the 18th century, but I think that it's going to be a much bigger deal and that people will find more employment in it uh, at, at all levels, from labor to management. And we're going to have to do it different. We're going to have differently. We're going to have to grow our food differently. Uh, how, how are we going to do it? Industrial agriculture 
that depends on massive amounts of petroleum-based inputs and capital, borrowed money, uh, is not going to continue indefinitely. We're going to have to grow more food on a smaller scale. It will require more human attention. It may actually it may require some animal uh, some some uh, animal power that we haven't used in many years. It, it may, I don't know whether it's five percent more, thirty five percent more, or seventy five percent more. We haven't set, it's totally unsettled. But that's one thing that we're going to have to do. And uh, you know I think that we're going to have to make some things in this country again. And we don't know exactly how that's going to work out. If they're not going to be like the 1927 factories, you know, getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger uh, until you, you end up with something like Ford's River Rouge plant. I think that a lot of our manufacturing, if we have manufacturing, is going to be based on water power and hydroelectric power and your ability to be around water and water transportation. And that's one of the reasons that I think the inland waterways are so important. So. Uh, uh, I think all these things are going to change severely in ways that we're almost incapable of entertaining right now because of our investment, our previous investment. So suburbia is not going to vanish, but it has four destinies. Uh, some of it will be retrofitted, but probably very little, and probably because of the capital problem, the capital scarcity problem. And the other three destinies are slums, ruins, and salvage. Because we're going to need to Which recycle a lot. Which one does Greenwich, Connecticut go to? Greenwich? Yeah. Well, they'll have a fourth resource. will be used hedge fund operators. <laughs> <laughs> but they may make very good agricultural laborers. Well, the, the guy I was referring to who talked about the McMansions, he thinks that they're all going to get cut up into apartments, which if you would ever dare to say that at Greenwich, would probably cause them to ride in the streets. You know? well, let's, no, but let's, I want, okay, so let's, uh, let's go to 